Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back. I'm so happy to meet you again in this new project, the value of advanced critical care echo in management of pneumothorax. You will see really in this uh, case, real case, I recently uh, saw the great value of advanced critical care echo in management and in diagnosis and in evaluating and uh, knowing exactly the uh, size of pneumothorax, how uh, and you know the best way to use ultrasound in assessment of pneumothorax in advanced way. And you will see uh, something new in this uh, case study. I hope uh, you will learn from it. Uh, before I go uh, through this case study, I need to announce for the, our eighth basic critical care ultrasound course. And in this time, it will be amazing and it will be very beneficial for everyone who need to master the critical care ultrasound because we have not only two days like every time, but we have another third day will be in uh, ICU and you will learn the physical sonographic science on real patient. Uh, this course will be held in Egypt, in Giza Medical Syndicate, in Doki, Giza, Egypt. And uh, the time will be on the 29th and 30 and 31 of January, this month, this year. And for anyone who need to join us in the course, he should contact Dr. Doha, the scientific coordinator on this uh, number, WhatsApp, okay? So it will be three days last January and will be held in Egypt in Giza Medical Syndicate and should contact this number for anyone, okay? Uh, our course is hands-on basic critical ultrasound teaching workshop and this time will be practical, hands-on on real patient. And as usual, we will talk about the lung diaphragm, basic vascular, and the basic critical care echo. We will teach this in this course through lecture and skill station, and in the third day will be practical, hands-on on real patient. We'll teach very important section in critical care ultrasound. First, applied ultrasound physics or machine nobology. You will know how to use your knowledge of the physics in a very simple way and you will know about machine nobology why because you need at the end of the day to get very clear image for easy interpretation you will assess and you will know how to assess the lung and the frame by ultrasound and you will know all the pathology which is very important to diagnose by uh, ultrasound, evidence-based now ultrasound is very important in diagnosis of a lot of pathology in the lung. You will know how to use low and high frequency probe to examine the lung and you will measure the diaphragmatic excursion and thickening uh, on volunteer. You will do it yourself. You will uh, know about basic critical care echo. You will learn how to visually assess left ventricle, right ventricle, and where to look for percapital effusion. You will measure the inferior vena cava collapsibility in very simple way. You will, uh, we will teach you the basic critical care vascular ultrasound. You will localize the major central vein, radial artery by ultrasound machine. You will insert yourself the cannula under ultrasound guide in play on simulators, phantom, which will simulate the real patient. You will also do a Fox compression test for diagnosis activity. All these areas you, we will cover by the evidence-based, uh, very good lectures and tens of real cases. Uh, and at the same time, you will uh, teach the normal. We will teach you the normal on volunteer. You will do the basic uh, echo views Long axis barasternal view, short axis view, barasternal, four chamber view, subcostal view. You will localize the veins, you will uh, examine the lung and the frame. This on volunteer to know the normal, but you will see the abnormal and the value of ultrasound to diagnose the abnormal pathology in lectures and tens of real uh, cases and videos. But uh, the unique in this time in our course, in our eighth hands-on critical care ultrasound course, will be the third day. In third day, 
it will be a practical hands on on real patient to see we will try uh, to uh, uh, show you all the important ICU sonographic signs. You will see the P line, the sliding, the consolidation, the pleural fusion, uh, right side dilatation, right heart dilatation, left side heart failure. We will try to see you all these sonographic, important sonographic. Uh, ICU science in real patient in ICU and this will be unique for the course because by this uh, the, uh, we will cover by this we will cover all the area uh, and hope you will start to do it yourself in your ICU and uh, teach uh, your colleague about that okay let us uh, come to our patient. Recently, I saw a 23-year-old male patient smoker who has been complaining of left side stabbing chest pain this year since four days. At the day of consultation, he complained of mild hemopsis. He was tall male, fully conscious, cooperative, hemodynamically stable, with blood pressure 130 over 80, heart rate 90 per minute, chest examination, diminished breath down over the left lung, heart is 22. We started lung ultrasound. We start to by the left parasternal view. This is upper rib, lower rib. We find lung pulse in this area. Lung pulse. Okay. But no sliding. Lung pulse beside no sliding. Lung pulse beside no sliding. Okay, let us survey. We go to the left upper, mid clavicular, no sliding. No sliding. You see? Lung pulse, but no sliding here, no sliding at all. And we did a mood, it's par code. Mid clavicular, left upper mid clavicular, par code. So it's going with, could be pneumothorax. Okay, they talk about the pneumothorax and they give, and they gave a very strong recommendation for pneumothorax. The sonographic signs of pneumothorax include the following. Presence of lung point, absence of lung sliding, absence of P-line, absence of lung pulse. So, in the area of the uh, left mid-clavicular, there is absence of lung sliding, okay? So, you should suspect pneumothorax. But, there is another strong level A recommendation, which says that in supine patients, the sonographic technique consists of exploration of the least gravitational dependent area progressing more laterally. What does it mean? Okay, if you see in the left mid clavicular area, no sliding, please. Once you pick up no sliding, as we pick it in our patient, left mid clavicular. Please go with your high frequency probe around the lung from parasternal to mid clavicular, anterior axillary, mid axillary, posterior axillary, and turn your patient to the side to complete the scanning by looking at the scapular line and the paravertebral line. Because in advanced level, and this will be the future, examination of the lung ultrasound for pneumothorax, you need to map, you need to map the pneumothorax. If there is pneumothorax, you need to map it. What is the extent of the pneumothorax? So, you will survey the lung all around by high frequency probe, searching for lung point to know the limit of the pneumothorax or in sliding. Okay? Because you, if you get no sliding, that means no lung point for the, lung, for the patient. That means it may denote severe pneumothorax, okay? Okay. We uh, go with our uh, high-frequency probe to lift upper anterior axillary, 
because I am going upper to get because the air will float up, so it, it is, you will uh, discover the pneumothorax in the upper areas. You see, no sliding in the left upper anterior axillary. No sliding in the left upper anterior axillary. That means no sliding in the left midclavicular, lung point in the left parasternal, no sliding in the left anterior axillary. And I go to mid axillary, I am mapping the lung. No sliding in the left mid axillary. And barcode. I go to the posterior axillary. No sliding, no sliding in the posterior axillary. No sliding, just humping. No sliding in the left posterior axillary and barcode. I turn the patient to the right side and examine at the scapular line. Nose sliding at the scapular line. No sliding at the scapular line. I went to left paravertebral. I find no sliding at the left paravertebral. Our patient has lung pulse at the left parasternal and after that while mapping the lung all around going from the midclavicular to the paravertebral no sliding and barcode by mmoot but at some point at the paravertebral i find lung pulse lung there is lung pulse you see at some point, at the paravertebra, there is lung pulse. Lung pulse. What's going on? I have lung pulse at the left parasternal and lung pulse at the left paravertebral, vertebra, and all the way there is no sliding and barcode. Right side, all sliding, proper sliding in the right side, proper sliding, you see, proper sliding, right side is clear, proper sliding. And to compare between the right side sliding and left side, no sliding. Okay, very clear, sliding and no sliding, okay. You see, right side by M mood, C sure, left side barcode. Left side, no sliding, right side slide. But I have lung pulse at parasternal and the lung pulse at paravertebral. I have anterior lung pulse and posterior lung pulse and in between pneumothorax. What is the explanation of that? I give you time to think and send me your opinion. I have anterior lung pulse, posterior lung pulse and in between pneumothorax. I am waiting for your opinion and I will give you in the next slide the diagnosis. You see, our patient has severe pneumothorax by X-ray here and the lung collapsed and shifted medially here. So, the heart pulsation 
use this collapsed lung to send the pulsation anteriorly and posteriorly and give lung pulse and in between there is pneumothorax. It's very interesting case really and this is the only explanation I have. This collapsed lung transmits the cardiac pulsation in this area in the center parasternal and paravertebral. So, we can say bilateral lung pulse, anterior and posterior, without any sliding denoting severe pneumothorax. We, we, we may say that. I believe it is a strange case and it is a very interesting case and I hope you enjoy it and if any uh, comment please send to me. Thank you. Bye-bye.